Hi, it's Caleb. And I'm Tori. And welcome to our podcast, Uncork and Listen. If this is your first time listening, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. If you do enjoy this podcast, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or on Spotify, whatever platform you're listening on. Also, go ahead and follow us on Instagram. This will all be in our channel description. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. We're back again with another episode. All right. So today we are going to be opening a bottle of California Heritage Extra Dry Sparkling Wine. <laughs> I is don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> is this an actual champagne? No, it's a sparkling wine. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's, it's not champagne. All right. Um, so yeah, if Caleb wants to go ahead and get that going. Let's do um, it. I also wanted to just let everybody know that if my voice sounds really nasal and stuff, <laughs> it's because I'm actually getting over COVID. Yes. Um, I'm not contagious anymore, <laughs> right. but I am, you know, getting over it. So yeah. I, I might sound a little... Yep. Not. And I don't... <laughs> I, you sound fine, honestly, but... Really? Yeah. I honestly can't tell. And we can, you know, we'll listen to this and see if yeah. it sounds different. I mean, different. I can personally tell, but... <laughs> Like, physically wise, do you yeah. feel like it or something? Well, I just feel just... Still congested. Yeah, in, and, my, in yeah. my nose, so yeah. just, you know, yeah, anyway. All right, without any further ado, other, without any further ado, let's open this sparkling All right, wine. let's hope that it doesn't explode. Right, I'm a little worried about it. Hold on. You want a glass, <laughs> just in case? Baby. Like, open it, and uh, then... We, we, here we go. Just be ready to pour it, basically. Listen to that, guys. <laughs> it sounds like kind of like a gassy fart. Oh my god! I felt like you were probably gonna be saying something like that. I mean, I couldn't help it, you guys. All right, here we go. Maybe tilt the wine glass a little. No, no, no. Like tilt like that because oh, oh, yeah. it's bubbly. Right, right, right. Yeah. <gasps> Oop! I just spilled, you guys. I'm sorry. They don't know. <laughs> it's not the floor. We all were like, <laughs> <laughs> you and I were both were like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh gosh, I need to dust this. <laughs> I need to dust that. All You're right. just over here talking about cleaning my, his house. <laughs> right. I do need to clean my house, you guys. We do our episodes in my bedroom, and my room is a little messy right now, so... <laughs> it's alright, nobody can see it. <laughs> no one can see it, you're right. Alright, shall we cheers? Yes, hold on one second, let me get this... Okay. Ooh. Any day now, son. <laughs> you're rushing me. <laughs> <laughs> alright, here we go. Oh, that was bad. Take your hand off of that. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. <laughs> That's the way. Yes. Did you get a taste of, like, right right up front? Like, it was almost like a apple yep. right up front. Yep, yep. Like, it, it was... That, it, I was wondering if you were going to say that. It hit real hard, like and a, then like it kind of calmed Smith down. Apple. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did you see my eyebrows, like, raise up? Yeah. <laughs> And I was, I was like, ooh, It's okay. actually really good because yeah. it, so it's called extra dry. It doesn't really taste that dry. honestly, I wouldn't say that it's extra dry. Mm -mm. I mean, it's not. It's dry. It is dry, but it's also a little sweet. Not yeah. like, I wouldn't say too sweet, mm -hmm. yep. but I, I don't think I would say extra dry. Wow. But wow. this bottle, um, if anybody was curious you might be able to get this from other stores i'm not sure but i where did you get this one yeah i specifically got this one from aldi okay they have yeah. a pretty good wine Aldi selection. honestly has a great wine selection and their yeah. wine is not that much no no everything and everything. normally if i see wine that's like cheap i'm like Ooh. right <laughs> i'm a little worried but see at aldi it's different because all of their stuff in the store is cheaper than your average grocery store right and it's because they they cut a lot of costs that your typical grocery store doesn't do. Sure. Like, they don't have as many employees. They literally just put, like, the whole box of stuff on the shelf. Um, this is really good. But I yeah. like this. Yeah. Wow. Honestly, my taste buds are not are still <laughs> right. at the normal place that they are because, for me, COVID tends to take away my sense of smell and taste right i can definitely taste it but i feel like you're probably might... not getting the full experience yeah. i'm getting yeah it shocked me 
Because, and I, I feel like part of it was because, like, the bottle does say it's extra dry. Right. So I was kind of expecting this very almost bitterish right. kind of taste. Yeah. And I did not get an ounce of that. No. Yeah, me neither. I mean, I took a sip and immediately I tasted apple. Yes. Yeah, and same. then it kind of settled. Uh huh. And was more of like your typical kind of dry, a right. white, dry kind of wine. So something that is unfortunate about this bottle is there's actually no information about the wine on it so there's there, yeah so there, there's there's nothing to read edit it some um, booing right <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that it says is on the very front okay it says that they use the i don't know how to pronounce this but it's charm it's not charmat Charmé? Something like that. Is it, it's French, probably. Yeah, yeah. So, like, Charmé or something. So, they use that method of... Correct us if we're wrong, spark, you guys. Sparkling <laughs> wine. Um, it says, secondary fermentation before bottling. So, oh. they fermented it a second time, I guess, before they bottled it. Interesting. Um, and then it just has a few words here. It just says, semi-sweet, which is true. Yeah. Um, sparkling and lively. This is great. But that's I the only I could totally info. have this with like a like a chicken salad. Oh yeah. Like if I was going to make a chicken salad, be on my porch. Yeah, it's like a, a nice, nice glass like, of this like a sum <laughs> like a summery type yeah. wine, you know. Cuz you chill it, it's bubbly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. Good stuff. I definitely recommend. And it wasn't I mean, this bottle was like maybe 5 or 6 bucks. From, okay. from Aldi, anyway. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Normally, with wine like being priced at that level, I'd be like, Ooh. right. <laughs> like I'd be a it's, little worried. But that's not how Aldi works. Because yeah. yeah, it's like it's true. there's a reason why their stuff is priced low. It's not just like it's cheap stuff. Right. The store, because not to get into a whole other thing here, but <laughs> something that I just happen to know is the prices of food and stuff at grocery stores uh -huh. is not the actual price right, of, of what the things are worth. Right. The stores add markups to everything. Right. Based on what to they need. To make more need money or something. To function. Yeah. So that's why for in Aldi's case, even though it's a low price, it doesn't mean that you're getting a cheap product necessarily. Right. You know. Yeah, this definitely is not... Like, this is good. I recommend this, guys. If you have a wall, uh, Waldy. <laughs> if you have an Aldi in your area. Yeah. Definitely, definitely look this check one it out. out. Definitely check it out. California Heritage Extra Dry Sparkling Wine. Mm hmm So, I actually, I feel like Tori and I both want to address the some of the topics we're going to be talking about. Uh, we we want to we wanna just give a disclaimer. Yeah. Um, there are the topics we're going to be discussing are... Um, a little sensitive mm -hmm. um, regarding some sexual abuse related stuff as well as some hate mm -hmm. um, language or right yeah <laughs> just some you know yeah so things that aren't very nice <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so so we do we just want to make that aware for our audience if um, you find certain things regarding that disturbing or uncomfortable um, just want to give you a fair warning yeah but yeah anyway so let's go ahead and start this off <laughs> yeah so we are once again delving back into hollywood history stuff yes. because it's a huge topic Love and this it's stuff. something that we are both interested in um absolutely and so we came up with a list of things that we want to discuss it's basically just like hollywood fun facts yeah you know things that you probably don't know mm -hmm. about different people different stories and stuff like that um Mm -hmm. So the first topic of business <laughs> is I'm sure none of y'all have heard of her because okay. I honestly had never really heard of her, but her name is Marnie Nixon. Marnie Nixon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she was actually the singing voice behind right. a lot of actresses at the time. Right. Because, right. you know, not everybody has an amazing singing voice, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And so right. they would bring in someone who could sing, okay. who would sing for them, and they would just like lip sync or whatever. Yeah. And what were some of the character like 
characters or or not characters but the actresses that she would sing for yeah yeah actually give me one second i actually oh, right. <laughs> let's talk about actually this yeah so go ahead yeah i'm sorry i don't want to interrupt you oh yeah it's fine um i was just gonna say i have this really cool book mm -hmm. that if you like hollywood and hollywood history i would definitely recommend it it's mm -hmm. a really cool book full of pictures and just all kinds of information that i'm yep. sure you didn't know about and the book is called this was hollywood forgotten stars and stories amazing so that's where i've gotten some of this information from so i kind of wanted to open look this up. book up you guys look it up Seriously. yeah it's called this was hollywood it's written by carla i've gone through this book myself in Valderrama. the past and it's and it's really there's some fascinating stuff in here yeah seriously there really is but anyway so, marnie nixon so yeah Let's so go. marnie nixon she sang four it looks like they only listed out three for but the, i'm sure there was the more book, but i'm sure there was more because yeah, she had a whole to be. career you know right. what i'm saying right um but she sang for deborah carr in the king and i okay that's an oh i don't know if i've actually seen that yeah. have you i've seen it once okay. like ages ago it's been okay. a long time since right. i've seen it we should just we should watch it sometime yeah we should anyway continue sorry <laughs> and then she also sang for natalie wood in west side story mm. the the main female lead yep. in west side story yep and then she also sang for audrey hepburn in my fair lady which is also yeah okay a very very popular mm -hmm. movie so yeah that's not audrey hepburn singing in that movie just so everyone's aware it is <laughs> It's Marnie Nixon. Marnie Nixon. Very, very... And you guys can't see the... Like, obviously, we don't have a visual, but she looks... She's very pretty. She's Can very, I just say she's that? She's very pretty. She's, very, she's a very pretty woman. You know who she kind of looks like? Who? She kind of looks like Julie Andrews a little okay. bit. Okay. Yeah, you, can I can see, see that? that. Like I her, can like see her that. Like her smile. Yeah, her smile, the hair. Uh-huh. Her like eyes. Her face shape. Yeah. I like do see they, that, actually. Like, they could almost be sisters, you know? Yeah. I feel like they do look a lot alike. But a, another cool thing that I wanted to mention is... So, these are... She sang for these actresses in those movies. But something else that she did was, you know, later on in her life, obviously. Because we're talking about movies from the late 50s and early, early 60s, 60s. Yeah. So, um, she actually did the voice of the grandmother in Milan. Oh my goodness. So when she was older, she uh, like she's the voice actress behind the, wow. the grandmother in Milan. And what blows my mind is this movie came out in 1998. Yeah. That blows me away. Yeah. That's crazy. It's that true. makes me feel old. I know, right? <laughs> Cuz I definitely remember watching that as a kid, you know. Kind of like 20 26 it right 26 years am I, is my math right <laughs> 25 26 years ago yeah i mean i'm 30 now Jeez. and i would have been you were a child four yeah you were a I child been like four yeah that is insane so yeah one two three yeah 26 good job wow all right anyway marnie nixon yeah amazing i just thought that was really cool yeah because a lot of times you know, when you watch old musicals and things, you just naturally assume that it's their actual voice and everything. Right. Especially when it's very famous actresses or mm. actors like Audrey Hepburn, Natalie Wood, Deborah Carr. Like, I don't know. I would always just think that that was their actual voice. But no. It was nope. Marnie Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but man. That's cool. But yeah, anyway, I, th I just thought that was... A cool little tidbit yeah um but the next thing that i wanted to talk about is actually about i love lucy lucille ball mm -hmm. All right. goddess ha have, have you watched that show <laughs> i have i mean obviously not as much as you have uh -huh. i have i have seen episodes here and there i kind of the premise of the show right basically it's <clears throat> lucy and her husband uh -huh. and then her lady friend and her husband and they uh -huh. do these performances i think it's like every at the end of every episode pretty much mm -hmm. but 
one thing you shared with me that I found out, you know. Uh huh. You shared it with me. It's my first time knowing this. Right. But it was actually the first live audience show. Yes. In history. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, like, it's such a common thing now, especially yeah. during, like, 80s, 90s, early 2000s. Like, literally every, like, friends show big bang theory yeah. all these shows cheers Frasier, cheers yes have like, been doing the same thing now and it's all become a of big the thing. shows and even like further back like the dick van dyke show was in front oh, of yeah. a live studio and the mary tyler moore I was show gonna bring that one up too it yeah. was very common like for for that style of show mm-hmm. that i mean ever since then they've been doing them in front of a live studio audience and what's really cool is, like, these people, like, Lucille Ball and yeah. Desi Arnaz, her husband, they were literally, like, pioneers of the industry right. Right. in many ways. Uh-huh. Like, they literally invented that. Right. And we still use it to this day. We do. And it's, we really it's do. interesting. I guess they just really liked that dynamic or something and that's why they continued to do shows I mean, like that i feel like it's more raw yeah it more is because it's, it's almost like seeing a play pretty much but they're you know and you're getting the audience like you're getting the audience's perspective and yeah things that they find funny and, and it allows people to go in to a movie set basically True. a television set yeah and kind of witness and see like how everything works. It's pretty much incorporating, like, a play or a musical or something into yeah. the movie, like, film industry. Right. And I've much. I've read that, like, literally, like, if you go to see um, a show that's filmed that way, yeah, it's literally like an all day thing. It's like right. it's like seven eight hours that they're filming, and, and they're probably like, there. and they're probably changing the set, right? Or they're taking things like like taking like furniture pieces out, and they're yeah. moving things in, and they're doing cuts, right? And, they're probably and, and they have and then to, you commercials know, would be playing during the process of this, right? Like it's a whole thing, yeah. It's a and, whole thing, and something that I think would be really cool that people that have gotten to go into shows like that and see you know them live something that they get to experience that other people don't necessarily get to experience as well is like they get to see like the raw bloopers oh yeah you know like when Uh someone messes up or someone's being silly messing around like they get to see that in live time that's true which is really cool (laughs) because some shows they've done a good job at like recording bloopers so that you can like go to youtube and like watch oh like friends there's plenty of but not every show has done that right especially like the older ones so it's like these people that got to go in there and watch it they were just getting to see all this stuff in yeah. live time that nobody else basically has gotten to see. There's one thing that has po- just just popped into my head that kind of makes me think about like loose like I love Lucy or Friends or shows like that where they had live audience and stuff. I just realized, mind you, this is live, so it's technically not entirely the same, but things like Saturday Night Live, right, do this as well. Right. You have your audience you do your skits, you're filming and they, it. And they do, like, break character and stuff. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> they do, but they keep going, you know, because right, it's live. Right, right, But it's just, it, I, I just now realize that that's kind of a very similar thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because when I went, I remember, because I, I, I have, I've, I've done, I've not done, I've seen Saturday Night Live. Uh-huh. I, I sat in the audience, and I got to see, like, just it was very raw. Yeah. Because they would do their skits. Uh-huh. And then as the commercials were playing, mind you, if you've gone to Saturday Night Live, if you actually watch a performance with your naked eye, uh-huh. <laughs> you get to watch on these TVs that they have, like the commercials and stuff, uh-huh. as they're like you know like transitioning transitioning into a different set or going over lines or Uh stuff like that so it i feel like it kind of gives a very similar yeah vibe yeah to what like lucio ball did right as well as like the raniston you know yeah all the shows yeah yeah so that is interesting yeah 
And something that I wanted to say, you know, going back to the original mm-hmm. topic at hand, right, is how, like, and why they ended up creating this idea okay, yeah. of filming a TV show in front of a live audience. Mm-hmm. So it was actually her husband's idea. It was okay. Desi Arnaz yeah. who literally invented this whole thing. And it's because before they were on TV together, they did a lot of... I don't know if it was necessarily like vaudeville, but they did a lot of stage performances together because he, you know, um, Desi Arnaz is Cuban and he was very well known for like playing the, like the bongo drums and everything. And he would travel around with like a band kind of like in the show. Sure. That's actually like what he did in real life. He would travel around with a band doing performances and also putting on like you know comedic sketches and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and there were times that lucille ball would go along with him and they would do you know comedic acts together and everything and apparently for her as an actress she always performed way better in front of a live audience because she would feed off of people's energy and their reactions. That makes sense. She could tell, like, oh, okay, they really like this. So then I'm going to kind of feed into that a little bit, like, you know, ad lib or like... So she fed off of the audience and that's always how she performed the best. Right. And her husband knew that about her. And so when they were putting this show together, they were like, he was like, you know what? Audience. He was like, yeah, like we should have an, a live audience on the set because Lucille Ball, her, his wife, performs best in front of a live audience. So that's literally that so cool. That's literally why he invented that, and it's used to this day. Used to this day, but do you feel like? And this is just an opinion. I feel like at this point, but do you feel like? People are doing it solely based on the fact that the actors and actresses can, like... like That th- might be feel, part of it. Or is it just now, like, may... a style right. that we just do? You know, you know, it probably goes both ways. Sure. I'm sure a lot of it is because it's just a style that has been used for so long at this point. Right. So it's just, they, you know, they know how to do it and stuff like that. So they, maybe they just keep, keep it up. But... I would venture to say that it probably does create a different level of authenticity for the actors. For for sure. Because they're performing live, basically, in front of an audience rather than just being on a set with cameras. It really does give a theatrical kind of experience for the person who's performing. Which, I mean, for some people, maybe not so much, but... I would venture to say that a lot of actors are probably similar to Lucille Ball in yeah. the fact that they enjoy feeding off of an audience and it kind of helps them perform. Yeah. You know? I agree with that, too. I would. <laughs> Should we announce? <laughs> Should we just say it? So, um, just so everyone's aware, um, we have Lucy. She is back in the house. And... We actually, before we started the episode, she, she, was, she out. was sleeping. She was sleeping. She was out. And now the girl's um, freaking out. And now the girl's freaking out. But we'll see how this goes. Do if you want to just keep... Let's keep going. I mean, if she if she does make a fuss, we can just like pause, like, pause and sure, take care take of it care and of it. stuff. And we can okay. hop back in. But yeah. So... But yeah, let's move on. Okay. So the next topic at hand is... Frank Sinatra Oof. being investigated by the oh, FBI. Oh, yeah. So, you guys, I just recently learned about this. I had no earthly idea. You didn't know about that? I don't know. I don't... I mean... <laughs> <laughs> when you, when we were, like, kind of going over, like, certain topics we wanted to talk about, you brought that up and I was like, what? Yeah. FBI? Yep. Oh, Lord. So, you can look it up now if you want to get you know more information on that but Uh i just happened to know so he was being investigated for multiple reasons 
Um, you know, obviously he was a well-known celebrity, so I feel like it's probably more common for the FBI to kind of be, like, keeping their eye on certain, like, popular people because they have a huge audience, they're very influential type people, so it's right. like they just want to make sure, you know, nothing funny is going on. And one of the reasons that he was being investigated is because they basically thought that he was involved with the mob. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is there, like, was that officially proven or was it... We can look it up and see. I mean, so I actually just pulled up... I literally typed Frank Sinatra FBI and there's actually a link... In, you can go into FBI.gov, and it's literally, and I'll show you, it's, it literally oh, wow. just says Frank Sinatra. <laughs> it's his whole file? Yeah. It's literally his whole file. But I don't know how you're supposed to go through, because it's just like a bunch of just different files. Right. Or whatever this is. Should I just tap one? You can, or just pick a different Google result. Okay. Good idea. So, let's see. Frank Sinatra what get this so I, I'm scrolling down I'm using my phone by the way you guys there <laughs> I'm scrolling down and there's another FBI.gov link that says really? Frank Sinatra Jr. kidnapping <laughs> his son it says Frank Sinatra Jr. Right, that's, we're just that's, gonna assume that's his that's son that's his son yeah on December 8th of 1963, a group of amateur criminals hopping, hope is hopping, <laughs> hoping to strike it rich. Here, I'm just gonna like click on this. That is crazy. What the heck? Here, do you wanna, do you wanna read it? I mean, <laughs> kind of just I can over. if you want to. This is just not go. even on the, the exact it's topic, not. but I mean. It's still it's, not. it's still pretty it's interesting. Still, yeah, uh-huh. For real. Um, <laughs> wow. How how have we never heard about this in the article Should says, we talk about this another time and just focus on Frank Sinatra? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, we can okay. talk about it. Like sure, okay. why not? We can have a little spin-off cuz sure. it's still why not? like, you know, th- you know, we always do this because it's like we have like a like we'll have kind of like a certain structure of how we want to do things, right. and then it just kind of falls apart, Morphs and we're just like something else. right. It completely changes I mean, the topic shoot, and who stuff. Who cares? It's still interesting, right? For real. But this article is it an article? FBI.gov. So yeah, it's not that, even it's, like it's an not article. even an article. It's like literally from the FBI website. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But they're saying that this is one of the most infamous kidnappings in American history. How? But somehow I've never heard of it. I haven't either. Right? But yeah, it happened December 8th. I don't even, I don't even know there was Frank Sinatra FBI any related. I have oh, no... Oh yeah, I knew about I that. I have no earthly idea. Yeah. So, um, it says, For several weeks, two 23-year-old former high school classmates... Of his son from okay. Los Angeles, Barry. So is it <gasps> buried? Okay, keep going. I'm no, sorry. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> this is their names. Oh! <laughs> it's like, oh my it's god, like, do they like they bury, bury somebody? <laughs> no. Jesus. Their, their okay. names were Barry Keenan and Joe Amsler. <laughs> they had been following a 19 year old singer from city to city, waiting to make their move. Um. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So the pair decided to strike on the evening of December eighth, nineteen sixty three, just days after the assassination of President John F. Okay. Kennedy. That's wild. That's uh-uh. crazy timing. Uh huh. Um. That is kind of suspicious, <laughs> right? And Sinatra Jr. So this is Frank Sinatra's son. Mm-hmm. He had apparently just. Um, he was just beginning his career in music, and he was performing at Haraz Club Lodge in Lake Tahoe on the border of California and Nevada. 
Okay. So around 9 p.m., he was resting in his dressing room with a friend when Keenan knocked on the door, pretending to be delivering a package. What? Keenan and Amsler entered, tied up Sinatra's friend with tape, and blindfolded their victim. Oh my gosh. I want to know, like, how this what happens. What the hell? Like, <laughs> like was, was Frank Sinatra Jr. not fighting back? Like, how does he just get blindfolded and stuff? Like... If there's enough people that... Just overpower. Overpower you, then there's nothing you can really do. Yeah, I guess That's so. That's crazy! What the... Right? F- right? So it says... Um, blah, blah, blah. So they took him out... A side door to their waiting car. That's scary. Right? That's terrifying. So basically, it sounds like these people were just wanting to make money. It seems like that was the target because they were targeting. Do like, I'm going to kidnap person. this person, and then, like, if you want them back, you got to pay blah, 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 right. blah, blah. Right. And they also just happened to kind of know him because it said they were classmates before. Oh. So that's probably why. Okay. They were kind of able to... Yikes. Yeah. That's horrible. I know. (laughs) So let's see. It says, um, the singer's friend quickly freed himself and notified authorities. Yeah, okay. So those two are stupid. Stupid criminals. Dumb. Roadblocks were set up and the kidnappers were actually stopped by police, but they bluffed their way through and drove on to their hideout in a <laughs> suburb of Los Angeles. So they fooled the cops? Yes. No way. Also, I said Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice Los it. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> um, Damn, this is crazy. Right? We weren't even going to talk about this shit. I just kept scrolling and was right. like... Right. Right. Let's see, Frank Sinatra, FBI, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden it popped up Frank Sinatra Jr. Right. Like, kidnapping. And I was like, what the hell is this? Seriously. <laughs> gotta dissect this one. Right. But anyway, yeah. So it says by 940. Okay, so the kidnapping, so it was at 9 o'clock, right? At so night. this is just like 40 minutes later. Okay. It so says. It too long. Yeah, it says the FBI office in Reno was but brought in thing. on the case. <laughs> okay. Agents met with young Sinatra's father, Frank Sinatra, (laughs) um, in Reno, and his mother in Bel Air, California. The motive was presumed to be money, just like I said. Um, They, the FBI recommended that Sinatra wait for a ransom demand, pay it, and then allow the bureau to track the money and find the kidnappers. Oh, smart. Yeah. Interesting. Because then they would obviously get the money back from right. them and everything, too. And but it allowed... The... God, yeah. talk about trauma. Right? That's scary. Right? So it says, the following evening, Keenan called a third conspirator named John Irwin, who was to be the ransom contact. Irwin called the elder Sinatra. I don't know why they're wording it this way. Just say Frank Sinatra. Right. (laughs) And told him to await the kidnapper's instructions. On December 10th, which is like 10 days. 10. Why did I say 10? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Two days. Just two. Two two days later. Just two, Tori. (laughs) Just two days. It's because it was December 10th. Right, 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 right. (laughs) So two days later. Mm. He passed along the demand for two hundred and forty thousand dollars in ransom. They didn't even ask for like a million, <laughs> right? Nothing big. <laughs> like y'all, you went Listen, through the trouble. I'm gonna, I'm gonna right. If you're gonna go through the whole damn trouble of trying to kidnap Frank Sinatra's son, uh huh. You know your ass is. Go- I'm gonna be asking for millions. Right. I mean, I know. Like back then, obviously, money. That's true. Was different. Yeah. Our so economy this, was definitely very This different. was probably worth a lot more yeah. than it is now. Right. But still. Craziness. Shoot for the stars, man. If you're going to <laughs> kidnap <laughs> a celebrity. Well. Seriously, might as well like be like, bitch. I want like two million. Right. <laughs> or something. Yeah. So, I'm, so I can live this, off this of This is honestly a really random number, too. 240,000? Yeah. Why not say, at least say 250? <laughs> Round up to a nice number. 
Like it's so true though. Two hundred and forty thousand. Okay, whatever, y'all. Wow. So um, Frank Sinatra gathered the <coughs> oh, money. Excuse me. We're good. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and he gave it to the FBI, which photographed it all and made the drop per Keenan's instructions between two school buses in <laughs> some town in California during the early morning the next day. Weird. That's crazy. Poor and Frank then, Sinatra Jr. Like, that's traumatic, actually. How old was he, did it say? Um, he was younger. He was... High school? Well, the kidnappers were 23, and they were schoolmates. Okay. So he was probably about the same age. Early 20s. Yeah. Okay. Damn. So, here it says, While Keenan and Amsler picked up the money, Irwin had gotten nervous and decided to free the victim. <laughs> oh my gosh. He just let him go. Girl, if I kidnap, which I'm not obviously going right. to kidnap somebody, but if I was going to kidnap somebody, I wouldn't be letting them go off of fear. Right. No. I mean, I guess like they got the money and everything, and then right. he was like panicking, so he's like, let's just let him go. I don't know. They went to jail, didn't they? Let's see. They um, went to jail. I just know it for a fact. It says Sinatra Jr. was found in Bel Air after walking a few miles and alerting a security guard. To avoid the press, he was put in the trunk of the guard's patrol car and taken to his mother Nancy's home. <laughs> they, put they put him in the trunk. trunk. In the <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Like, can He's you like, imagine? Yeah, let like, me just in get in the day? trunk. I don't want anybody to see me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that could, that, talk about, like, this, listen, he had a story to tell. Yeah, he was like, God, you won't believe this. Like, right. I got kidnapped. <laughs> like, right. I was in the back of a trunk of a police car because they didn't right. want to see me. Uh-huh. That is crazy, man. Oh my gosh. Wow. So, it says <laughs> that he described what he knew to the FBI agents, but he had barely seen the two kidnappers and had only heard the voice of the third conspirator. Oh, okay. So, it says that the Bureau tracked the clues back to the house where Sinatra had been held and gathered even more evidence there. Meanwhile, the FBI's, excuse me, progress being recounted in the press, the criminals felt the noose tightening. Mm. Er, of course he broke first. The dude that let him go. He's <laughs> oh, obviously right. yes. a freaking right. scaredy cat. Uh -huh. So it says he broke first, spilling the beans to his brother who called the FBI. Oh my gosh. Hours later, Keenan and Ams Amsler were captured and nearly all, <laughs> all of Excuse the me. ransom was Excuse recovered. Me, sorry. Um, let's see... That is some crazy stuff. It just says in the end they were they were all convicted, but as it doesn't say what kind of sentence they. That's fine. I don't care. Served. But yeah, <laughs> they caught him. Well, yeah. So wait, I know our audience can't see this, but who who who, are, who is this? So those are the the people, the kidnappers, and then I think is that Irwin, the the conspirator. Uh, Y'all, okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Do we want to look up why Frank Sinatra was being investigated, or is that good enough for now? Just that I story? Mean, I think we should, honestly. Okay. Let's, let's do it. Do just we look need up, to... Just look <clears throat> up why was Frank Sinatra, you know, being investigated by the FBI? <laughs> what? So I'm typing this in, right? And the <laughs> first thing that pops up, it says, why was Frank Sinatra buried with 10 dimes? <laughs> what the heck? That's something I know. else I've we never... Need to stay on, we need to stay on topic. But we yeah, topic. We, we do. We, just, we need to focus on a specific topic because this is throwing me through a loop. Let's take a pause on that uh -huh. and let's do our little trivia game and then we can jump back little in. little trivia segment and then we'll go into Frank Sinatra. All right. Sounds right, good. Let's do it. So 
So, <clears throat> in our trivia segment, we wanted to play a little game where we actually guess when specific movies came out. We've done stuff like this before, like what year they came out. We have done this with different categories. Yeah. But we really wanted to kind of stick with classic movies. Right. And this includes Disney, the, pretty much anything. Yeah, any old classic Any old film. classic, just iconic movie. Yeah. And we're just going to do our best and guess when they were when released they in theaters. Out. Yeah. All right. So the first one we're going to do is Peter Pan. Disney's Peter Pan. Ooh, the classic. That's one of my favorites. Peter Pan. Yes. I it is love... a good. I haven't seen this movie in a hot minute. Oh, I love oh, that excuse movie. Excuse me. We need to watch this movie at some point, honestly. We should. It's been a minute for me. I do remember loving this movie. Yeah. But I do. I, I, it's an older one. Yeah, of course. But I... I want to say this movie came out before my parents were born. I could be wrong. I think so too. But because my my both my parents came were bo- came out. <laughs> my, my, they my, just came on out. They just came on out that vagina. No. So my parents both they were born in the early 1970s, and I want to say this came out before they were born. I think honestly. so too. So I'm gonna say I'm just gonna pull a 1965. Okay. Let's just do that. That's a good number. Um, What about you? Yeah. I can get behind that. Um, Okay. I was honestly thinking a little bit earlier. Do it. Um, Like, more like like 1960. Okay. I don't know. Do you even think it could be... Do you feel like deep down in your heart... Deep there, down <laughs> deep down, deep down in, in your heart. soul, <laughs> do you feel like I got it that could... joy, joy. <laughs> down in uh-huh. my heart? Where? <laughs> <laughs> so, do you feel like it could be a 1950s even? It honestly, could okay, but Here. I'm still I'm gonna stick to 1960. Okay. But yeah. All right, let's look this up real quick. When did Disney's Oop, I spelled that wrong. (laughs) Disney's Peter Pan. Peter Pan release in theaters. Okay. Already have it up. What is it? Are you ready for this? Yeah. Peter Disney's Peter Pan was released February 5th of 1953. Wow. So this is like longer than I realized. So I had a suspicion. That it could have been in the 50s. Yeah. But I wasn't thinking, like, the early 50s. I wasn't either. I just I just knew it was before my parents were born, and they were yeah. born in the 1970s. Uh-huh. So, I mean, I knew it was pretty old, but I did not realize that it was right. that old. Right. That is crazy, crazy, crazy. All right. So, the next one we're going to do is Easter Parade with Judy Garland and who? Uh, Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. This movie I actually watched recently. I think it is brilliant. It's a I great movie. I love this movie. movie so much. I had so much fun watching this movie. But we know this one's an oldie. It is, because it's Judy Garland and mm-hmm. Frank Sinatra. Um, Easter Parade. You know what? <sighs> Shoot. I'm going to say... This was this was after Wizard of Oz for sure. Oh yeah, that was like the first for one. Sure. That but it was her. also black and white. And when was Wizard of Oz made? Wizard of Oz was nineteen thirty nine. I'm pretty okay. sure. So I'm going to say nineteen, like late forties. Forty six, forty seven. Okay, okay. I'm going to get on board with that. I'm going to say 1948. I'm trying to be real specific here with my ears. Normally, yeah. <laughs> normally I'm very like, uh, I'm going to say like in the 1950s time. Right, right. No, no. All right. So let's look this up. I said 1948, mm-hmm. right? Is that what I said? Yeah. Okay. And keep in mind, it is a color film. Is too. it? It is. It's in color. Oh, Jesus. I don't even remember that it was a color film. I just remember it being black and white. Nope. It's not. It's in color. <laughs> it's, it's in color, but I still. For some reason, I remember it being black and white. That's embarrassing. Huh. Okay, all right, let's look this up. We're, what were you gonna say? 
Yeah, I was just gonna say, I still think that it was like the later 40s, but I was, I said 46 or 47. What? I am spot on. <gasps> no way! This is my first time getting a year right. <laughs> It was 1948? July 8th, 1948. Good job. Wow. Look, applause. I want you to good, add some applause yeah, in the editing. Good job. <laughs> Woo! I got my first one right, y'all. Woo! Okay. Awesome. Okay, that was a good so guess. That was I, a good I mean, guess. I was really, really yeah. close, too. I oh, said, yeah, you were. You were. I said 46, 47. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. So, the next we're going to do is Swiss Family Robinson. Ooh, another solid, 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 solid movie. Disney movie. Love it. Um, Gosh, this one, that one's old too. Um, it is, but I feel well, like it's more recent you know what? compared to the others that we've been listing. I would, s- I would venture to say 1960. Okay, I was gonna say a little later than that. Were you? I was gonna say maybe like late 60s, maybe like a 67, 68. Okay. I just remember... Well, the only reason why I'm saying this is because my dad said that he remembers this movie. Shit, it probably is like... And this might be pushing it. It might not it, be the it 70s. It cannot be the 70s. No. It's, no way. No. But I remember my father, like, talking a lot about it. Like, he loved this movie when he was a kid. Right. So... But even still... It, but it still would have been older, allegedly. It would... For, hi, for him, as a child, it probably would have just been what like five to ten years old ish right you know what i'm saying so I, I i'm still gonna stick with well you said late 60s i said 1960. i said late 60s i'm probably gonna say like 1967 okay what are you gonna what are you gonna say well i said 1960 i'm being suspicious i am being whoop english i'm being specific this the this episode yeah you are all right all right swiss family robinson release date release date okay so swiss Henry robinson was released in theaters december 21st of 1960 Yay! so you were there <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I, I got it late. right you did you did so you got one right <laughs> and then i got and one the right applause in there <laughs> Woo! nice 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 <laughs> 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 all right, all right, all right. So the next one is 101 Dalmatians. Ooh, this good is one. another classic Disney movie. Yeah. That I have not seen in a hot minute, mind you. You know what? This is one of Tori's favorites. Oh, I'm yeah. pretty sure, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it really is. I'm going to go back for this one. I was thinking 50s, personally. 50s is a fair guess. I was honestly going to say, like, and this might be crazy. I don't know. Yeah. I was going to say, like, 1949. Whoa. Okay. Dang. I could be I wrong. Not, no, no, I'm right. I understand, but I, my brain was not going there. I'm going to say. I just feel like it's old. I don't know. You're making me, like, kind of feel like that, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. But I'm going to say. I'm just going to do, like, 1954. Okay. And you're going to do, what, 49? Is that what you said? Yeah. All right. Let's look this one up real quick. All right. 101 Dalmatians. 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 Uh, excuse me. Okay. okay. So, I got it up right here. What did I say? You said 1954? 54, okay. All right, this one, we're both wrong. Okay. Kind of, we're actually like kind of off. Kind of. <laughs> is, it, is it newer than I thought? Oh. So this movie actually was released in 1961. Oh. Yeah. And something... That's, that's kind of shocking to me, honestly. It is, a little bit. I mean, I, I knew this was an older movie. I knew that. But... I don't. I mean, I was just. I was just okay. expecting it to be a bit older for some reason. But this movie, and we haven't ta- been talking about Rotten Tomatoes ratings, but this movie actually has an amazing rating in Rotten Tomatoes. Which uh, they Rotten Tomatoes it's is rare. super super picky yeah. about the movies. One Hundred One Dalmatians has a ninety eight percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which wow. to me 
That's impressive. Yeah, it That's really is. That's very impressive. I mean, it is a good movie. I haven't seen this movie in a hot minute. We need to watch all these. We do, we do. <laughs> all right, so then this one, this is our last one. The last one. Mimi and St. Louis Ooh. with Dorothy. Or Mimi and St. <laughs> Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Judy Garland. She also played Dorothy. Right. Oh <laughs> from Wizard of Oz. But... <laughs> It has Dorothy. <laughs> right. Dorothy. It has, our, it has our girl Dorothy in it. No, okay, cool. So, Mimi and St. Louis, which Dorothy. I love this musical. It's so I good. love this musical. Yes. I have. I love the movie. I love the play. It's all I, good I actually stuff. just watched it this past week when I, had, when I had COVID and I was okay. just laying around. <laughs> right. I turned that one on. There we go. There we go. All right. So, this one... Um, Oof. this one, okay, so I, I, she was younger. It was when she first got engaged to Vincent Minnelli, because he was the director of that movie. You're right. And so he maybe was early like, 40s? maybe her second husband, I think. Oh, oh okay, so this would be later. But be like, she Ooh. was still pretty young. Um, so... Maybe like 40... When... So, Easter Parade came out in 1948, you said? Yes. Um, this would have been after that, right? Or no. No, no, no. You're right. Yeah, no, no. It wouldn't no, be. No, I'm going to say like 19... I'm going to stick to my original with what I said with Easter Parade. I'm going to say 1946. Okay. I think that's fair. I I want to say... I'm going to say the same thing, okay. honestly. Yeah. So, 1946... Meet me in St. Louis. Louis. Meet me at the fair. All right. Tell me <clears> the lights are shining. Any place but there. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's. So. What did we say? 46? Mm hmm. Yo. This came out in January of 1945. Oh, one. We were so close. This movie, guys. I just want you to all know that I remember watching this as a kid. This is probably one of one of my favorite Judy Garland movies. It's very. If I'm gonna be honest, yeah. And only only because not because this is like the best one or whatever, but this one actually hits close to home. Yeah. Because I grew up on this movie. It's nostalgic. It's very nostalgic for me. Um, I love music. I love the acting. I love the whole story. It's hilarious. Yeah. The little sister. Yes. Hilarious. Tootie. Yes, Judy. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, all right, guys. So that is it for our tri- trivia segment. We um, wanted to dive back into the Frank Sinatra because we kind of went off trail yeah. Yeah, with we the did. whole kidnapping thing, yeah. which was crazy. Seriously. But anyway, so yeah, let's go. Let's. Let's talk about his FBI investigation kind of situation. Yes. <laughs> so, all right. <clears throat> um, it says that he was the target of many extortion attempts that the FBI investigated. Sinatra appeared in many FBI files in connection with his contacts with racketeering investigation subjects and his early involvement with the Communist Party in Hollywood. Damn. Oh my gosh. He's one of those. (laughs) Yikes. I forgot. That was a whole thing. Marilyn Monroe also was listed because at some point, I think... Oh, FBI she, was on her ass, too? For the same reason. Damn, okay. Um, there was a, a, a handful of celebrities at the time who had, at some point, been affiliated with the Communist Party. Okay. And after, you know, just the wars and everything that was, like, going on, like, they were, like, you know, like, on um, that stuff. Right, And right. so they just... They didn't trust people that were affiliated with those parties sure so it looks like frank sinatra was one of them i know marilyn monroe was also one okay um so that was one reason um i just happened to know that he had ties with the mob okay and i think that's one of the reasons why he was being investigated as well um and there's another thing too like he he stood out like a sore thumb 
So FBI would be kind of on his ass about that stuff, you know? Right, yes. And from what I've heard, because I've seen, like, documentaries and stuff, I don't think he was actually involved with the mob. It's just he had a lot of connections and right. stuff. And I think he came from New York or okay. something. So I think I, he... I don't know. But yeah, yeah, so I think he just had <clears throat> connections with the mob, and they were just basically watching him just to make sure that there wasn't anything... That he was doing ...going on. But I don't think he really was. I mean, there's nothing... <clears throat> according to um, mm-hmm. FBI.gov and what 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 they've been sharing about Frank Sinatra it it seems like nothing specifically yeah i mean he never got caught down. for anything wasn't convicted for anything i just think he had ties to it right and they were just which is still like ooh Frank Sinatra fbi what right yeah <laughs> like it's really like oh my gosh what's going on guys right exactly for sure yeah yeah that yeah that was definitely a whole thing right um, right but so the the main topic at hand, in my opinion, um, it's just a bigger story, mm-hmm. and this is the reason why we gave a disclaimer right. at the beginning of the episode. Yes. Um, so, in recent times, there have been some documentaries that have come out, mm-hmm. like the Nickelodeon one. Yes. A of lot of scandals. Just kind of bringing light to a lot of abuse in Hollywood goes down. and stuff. Yeah. Just, you know, think crazy things happen when you have men in power and they're just not afraid of anything. Mm-hmm. Like there's just nothing stopping some of these right. people. People in power and baby, they can they have the ability to do a lot of things that you know, they just, should not be doing. No, exactly. <laughs> so. No, it's a, it's an abuse of power. Yeah, it is. Um but something that may or may not be shocking to some of you guys is this type of abuse has basically been going, on, been going on since day one mm-hmm. of Hollywood. As much as we <clears throat> love, you know, Hollywood history and sure, classic right. movies and stuff. Of course. These abuse stories go back to the very beginning. Mm-hmm. You know? And there's this one story in particular that I found in this book mm-hmm. that I have. And it was a girl named Cora Sue, mm-hmm. and she was basically a Shirley Temple type, you know. Some would say some would say that she was, you know, kind of like a Shirley Temple rival, you know, just right. an up and coming female child star, right? Of the time, we're talking about thirties, forties. Okay. So and early, so early, early. Yeah. Oh, early on. <clears throat> yes. Um, so that's her. Her name is Cora Sue. And Hi, Cora Sue. <laughs> right? <laughs> so basically, girl. she got started really young. She was probably like four or five years old. Mm-hmm. Like, she got started. We're talking um, like, like Shirley Temple. Oh, yeah. She, kind of young. Yeah, yeah exactly. She was yeah. very little when she first got started. And she was very talented. Everybody liked her. She was landing all these different roles and mm-hmm. stuff. And then, basically, one day, when she was in her, like, mid-teens, like, probably, like, 15 years old or so, she just left. She left Hollywood, and nobody heard from her again. Hmm, okay. And it was always kind of a question, like, oh, what happened to Cora Sue? Like, I haven't seen her in any movies anymore and all this stuff. Like, right. nobody knew where she went. And she was basically unwilling to share her story for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And then basically for this book, um, she decided, she eventually decided to speak out about her experience. Right. And I'm sure you can find this stuff, you can find her information anywhere. It's not specifically in this book. I'm sure you can find it anywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. of course. That's just, this is just how I learned about right, it. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah. So basically what had happened was so there were different experiences mm, that she had along the way of her childhood in Hollywood that was a little strange um different things that she heard like famous actresses saying and stuff like that um it's not very nice this is why we gave the disclaimer <laughs> yes disclaimer but, guys 
Should I read <clears throat> yes. the quote? I think you should, yeah. Okay. So one day, um, I think she was in John Mayer's office, who okay. was right. one of the producers of MGM. Because yes. so MGM stands for... It was two Mayer brothers. It was Louis B. Mayer, John Mayer, and then the G... Honestly, I can't remember what his last name was, okay. but it was these three dudes that started MGM, okay. and it's their last names. Gotcha. So she was in one of the producer's offices, I think John Mayer. Um, she was still pretty young. I mean, probably, I don't know, like seven, eight, nine years old or so. God. And someone came into the room flew open the door and her back this actress was turned to them and she was shouting at somebody else like in the hallway and this is and are you reading this part or is it just yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry i just i didn't know if you're telling the story still or if you're reading the actual book yeah a little bit of both Okay, okay okay um so this actress came in swung open the door her back was turned to them she was talking to somebody out in the hallway and she shouted don't tell me that I f***ed every Jew bastard on the way up. Jeez. So basically, basically they f- their way up. Yes. With these specific men. Men. Who just happened to be, you know, Jewish. A lot of... Right, right. Well, right. Prominent yeah. producers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Even to this day are Jewish. It's mm-hmm. just... It is what it is. Right, right, right. You know? But that's Yikes. basically what this woman was saying. And Cora Jeez. Sue overheard that and i'm sure at that point she was like what the hell right I'm and she was not... she was still young enough that she didn't know what f-ed me. she was a she was she a did, kid so she literally like it literally says that when this happened it was the actress's name who said that by the way is norma shearer um and then she turned to one of the men in the room and she was like what does mean <laughs> <laughs> like she literally didn't even know what she was talking oh, about no i mean she was a little child what do you expect at that point right damn so that was like an early on memory that cora sue had of hearing just someone randomly make this comment right that basically this woman got to where she was because she was Sleeping around <laughs> with all the producers and directors. Don't give me that bull crap. We know people have been doing that. Like people do that all mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we're don't. talking about like the thirties, forties here. And this is in front of a child. Yes, who's in the Hollywood industry, who is working her way up, and eventually was like, no. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> I'm not yeah. doing whatever these girls are doing. You know what right. I'm saying? Like it was just so. Damn. I can I can get on with the story to yeah. kind of explain what happened Go and ahead. the reason why she ended up leaving Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, so she was about fifteen years old, mm-hmm. and she was called in to um, uh, actually I think she was called to his house, which is already, pushing the boundary. Already a red flag. In yes. my opinion. And honestly, what it said in the book is that she was called up by this um, director. Hold on. Let me see what his name was. His name was Harry... Shoot. We're about to expose somebody. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably dead now. <laughs> <laughs> sure he is. <laughs> like, seriously. Oh, my um, gosh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, just give me a second. No, you're good, you're good. Harry Ruskin. Ruskin, y'all heard it. Harry Ruskin, y'all. <laughs> okay. So it says so it says here that Harry Ruskin was one of MGM's most important screenwriters. I'm sure he was. Right? <laughs> so he wrote, you know, for for MGM yeah. and stuff like that. And Cora Sue 
was I think pretty close to him. She respected him a lot. Like she was, she had a contract with MGM. So if he was a screenwriter for them, I'm sure he wrote a lot of the stuff that she was doing. Right. So she knew him. She was familiar with him. She respected him and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And then one day he basically called her up when she was about 15 and he wanted her to come over to his house. Ooh. And she turned uh, uh, she turned uh, uh. him down. Yeah. Yeah, listen. She turned him down like probably three or four different times. Jeez. Like, no, I don't feel right about so that. So he was like, doing this repeated it repetitively. Oh, he was, like, this wasn't he was, just one time, one thing kind of thing. Oh no. He no. was like trying to get her over there. Damn. And she said no, 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 you know, multiple times. Yeah. And then eventually she caved because he kept Damn. he kept calling her to come over. And so oh, gosh. she eventually went and she was expecting like other people to be there and stuff. So nope. like when she showed up, it was just him. And she's like, where are all the other people? Like, where are the producers? Where are the writers? Yeah. Where are and the- like, you know, keep in mind, she's a 15 year old girl mm-hmm. just going over to this screen. Minus, yeah for real and she's like so where is everybody else like why is it just you and me right now gosh and basically he showed her a script that he had written just for her so he wrote a role for her that so he's he basically knew. making her feel real special oh yeah so he was like, hey, I wrote this role. It's the exact kind of role that you've been wanting to play because they knew each other and everything. Right. So he wrote a role specifically for her. It was like, it was basically her dream role. Right. And she said that. She she read Damn. over the part and the That's character hard. and everything. She That's was tough. like, She was like, oh my gosh, yes. Like, this is like the perfect role for me. This is kind of what I've been looking for. This is what I really want to do. Mm-hmm. And he was like, okay, cool, yeah. He was like, so if you want this role, then you have to sleep with me. Mm, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> yeah. No. Keep, keep in mind, she's 15 years right. old and he's in his 50s. Ooh, ugh, ugh, ugh. You know? Mm mm. Yeah, no. bad. <laughs> That's it's bad. The bad taste of my mouth. <laughs> it's bad. It's so bad. It is horrible. And she basically, like, God. naturally freaked out and i think she excused herself to the bathroom and she was like looking for a window or something that she could climb out of she girl, was like i would have i would have broke down the damn wall right. i would have the girl i would have hauled my whole ass out of the house mm-hmm. no thank you that's creepy yeah so power yes and here's the thing that Abusive i do power baby That's what it is. Here is something that I do respect about her Mm -hmm. is the fact that she instantly was like, hell no, and was trying to get out of that house. Because I feel like a lot of people kind of clam up. Yeah. Especially as like a younger person respecting that person. It's like. You're right. So a lot of people really are taken advantage of and actually go through with this kind of stuff. Just because everybody's different and people handle these kind of situations differently. Yeah. But I think it's really good that she was just like instantly like, hell no. Mm-hmm. Like, let me get out of she here. She walked out. She's like, no, honey, that's not me. I'm not doing that shit. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> right. So basically, she ended up getting out of the house and everything and nothing happened. Right. Um, but what she I did. Just heard I just heard not Belle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lucy is barking. <laughs> But basically what happened next, and this is what kind of blew my mind, it takes it a whole other step further, is she ended up running to John Mayer's office. Did did she say something? One of the producers of MGM. She went to his office (sighs) and she told him what happened. She Uh, was like, yeah, so Harry Ruskin, (laughs) you know is basically trying to bribe me in this way with this role and everything. Jeez. And literally John Mayer like goes over, sits on the arm of the chair beside her and is like get used to it. <gasps> uh-uh. I'm mm-hmm. getting used to shit. Right? <laughs> you got Which me up. It's basically you got me doing saying shit. it tells you a lot in that those, this has in been those going few on. words that he said. And if you want to have it, this fame girl then you gotta do all the shit. I ain't doing that 
Like, nope. doesn't that just tell you that that is just the culture that they've had, mm-hmm. basically? And it's if the producer up. tells this 15-year-old girl to get used to a it. A minor, people. A minor. Like, these people They're should be locked. They should have been this. locked up. 1,000%. Like, mm, that even, even though she got away and nothing happened, it's right. like that. I feel like that's still a crime in itself. Yeah. Like, it is, girl. Like, you can't do that. No. And then the producer not even being like, yeah, that's messed up. He shouldn't have said that. And like firing his ass. Instead, they probably fired his ass because he had so much power. And he probably was oh, making you them know, bank. Listen, all of those men were corrupt. Yes. And they were all friends. And they were all working together. And this, quite frankly, goes... And and this goes... I'm over, You could fast forward... Even the Nick Loading quite on set. I mean, we, you and I both have watched this show. I'm sure a bunch of you, if you're listening, have watched this. If you have not, it's insane. But this stuff has been going on even since then. Oh, yeah. And to this day, I feel like as a culture and society, we are bringing more knowledge, uh, like awareness to this and how this is actually a really, it's a serious problem. Right, yeah. But... It's still out there, guys. Yeah. And this is not okay. It's been going on and it's since been going day on one. Way and too these long. people somehow just keep getting Managed. away with it. Mm-hmm. Which is, it's just, it's wild to me that, like, she went to the producer of the studio trying to confide in him, yeah. trying to do the right thing, yeah. telling him what happened to her. Yikes. And the dude says, um, yeah, get used to it. That's what you're going to have to do. No! It is not going to do, girl. You know, no, which which goes back not. to when she was younger and she heard that actress come in and say what she did. Oh, poor Lucy. <laughs> so there's clearly people who actually caved and were doing that crap just to further their career. You Absolutely know what I'm saying? Not. Absolutely not. But something that's kind of cool <clears throat> that I wanted to mention real quick before yeah. we kind of you know close out our time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is. Lucille Ball actually had before. And speaking of Lucille I know, Ball, Lucille's right. ready for us to be done. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, where'd y'all She's go? Like, where'd y'all go, girl? <laughs> so, right, Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball actually befriended her as a kid. Oh, okay. And she, you know, was kind of looking after her, you right. know, just as a kid in Hollywood. She was just kind of, you know, just keeping an eye out for her and everything. Right. And, um, I, I read that she even gave Cora Sue like a key to her house and she's like anytime oh. you need somewhere to go if you need somewhere to crash like you can come over to my house kind of uh, thing like she was really looking really caring and, yeah yeah she was she was Amazing. a great a great person yeah. Lucille Silval was awesome like that yeah um so she was looking out for this girl um <clears throat> So basically what had happened is after all this stuff went down, she mm. went to Lucille Ball to confide in her. Right, right. And told her everything that had happened. Right. And Jeez. I can read off here what Lucille Ball Go said ahead. to her. Go ahead, yeah. So she had confided in her and then Lucille Ball said that son of a bitch. Mm? Seriously though. <laughs> and she's and then she said she wasn't the least bit surprised. Oh, gosh. So she knows. To even, like, for, yeah, for her, like, seal ball would be like, yeah, dude. Like, yeah. And then, consoling her, she said, darling, it's not your fault. Yeah, it's not your fault, girl. She's like, it just and I'm it sure has nothing this to brought do with her you. So much, I'm sure this brought her so much trauma. And all yeah, these different, like, feelings of, like, why did me? I mess up? Like, what did Why? I do? Right, exactly. Because yeah. it says here, like, in spite of that, um, <laughs> she... <laughs> Girl, y'all, Lucy. she's ready. <laughs> We're going to close um, this up real quick. It's all right. But, but yeah, Cora Sue said, I didn't know enough to take her advice at the yeah. time. Because she was trying to, you know, be like, hey, like, it's not your fault. Right. It's not because of you. These are just trashy people. That are yeah. just doing this to anybody. It, it like it has nothing to do. Mm-hmm. But she was like, I just I didn't know enough at the time to take her advice. And for years, Cora Sue felt guilty about the incident and thought that she had to have been responsible in some Jeez. way. Damn. Craziness. 
craziest so, guys. Yeah, which I think is pretty common for instances like that. I feel like people can't help but kind of go there in their mind. Yeah, like, of course. I mean, I've, I for anyone that has gone through something like that, mm-hmm. I'm sure that there's been moments where they feel like they could have done something differently or it's all their fault. Like, I mean, this, these things happen and it's horrible. It's horrible. Yes. But anyways, guys, on that note, we're going to end it here. Obviously, you can hear that Lucy is ready for us to be done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for listening. If you guys would like, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you're listening on YouTube or go ahead and follow us on Spotify, guys. We really would appreciate it. Um yeah we also do have an etsy store open if you just search on cork and listen we do have this link in our description below you guys if you want to check that out that'd be great we also do have instagram just search on cork and listen you will see us there um if you just give us a follow guys we really would appreciate it again thank you guys so much for joining us and listening in and hope you'll join us next time it's been fun guys yeah it's been really fun all right we'll see all you right. all next time all right bye <laughs> bye